So our objective for today is to be able to graph the zeros and in behavior of polynomial functions. So today for part one, we're only basically drawing just a sketch of polynomial functions. Uh, polynomial functions are the functions that kind of just, they loop in different places. Um, they could be like a cubic function is a polynomial function. You could have a quadratic function, which would be like a W or M. That would be a quadratic function. So we're going to learn how to graph these today, um, but it's just the basic uh, graphing, okay? Cell phones put away. If I see your cell phone, I'm going to take it. All right, so for prior knowledge, you guys are supposed to describe the end behavior of the function shown. Um, so as a reminder, when we did this, the left and the right side, the left and the right side go with the x-axis. So the left side goes to negative infinity. The right side goes with the positive infinity. And then your y-axis tells you if it's up or down. So if it's going upwards, it's positive infinity. And going down is negative infinity. Okay? So if I look at this side over here, is that the left side or the right side? No. Left side. And is it going upwards or downwards? Down. down. And then the other side um, is this over here. That is going to be the right side. And it's also pointing downwards. And somebody in first period asked me if it mattered that it was still on the right side. I'm sorry, the left side of the y-axis. That doesn't matter that it's still on the left side of the y-axis. We're looking at the left side of the graph and the right side of the graph. Okay. Um, so the left side is approaching the negative infinity, right? So I'm going to put negative infinity for the left side and is going downwards. So downwards is a negative infinity for the y's. Um, so again, I did the left side is negative, pointing down, so the y goes to negative, okay? So I want you guys to practice the right side the right side going down. Fill in your infinities. Which infinities are they? Positives or negatives for each one? Go ahead and righties tell your partner for the end behavior. Okay, ready? All right. Um, Carlos, can you tell me where, there you are. Carlos, uh, the right side is which infinity? Positive. Okay. So we're going to put positive here and it's going downwards. So downwards is which infinity? Alondra? Negative infinity. Thank you. All right. So today we're actually going to be going backwards. Talking to me to stop, please. Eyes up front. We're going to do this backwards today. I'm going to give you the end behavior. You have to figure out if it's the left side and the right side, up or down. Yeah, it's fine, but it's still the right side because this goes on forever, right? So as this goes on forever and ever and ever, it's eventually going to go over to like the positive sides. But um, like if I were to graph that on decimals and I like zoom out all the way, it will eventually go to the positive. It just, it keeps going forever. So the X's are approaching positive infinity. All right. Um, so like I said, today we're going to be going backwards. I will be giving you the end behavior. I will be giving you guys this, and we're going to go backwards. You have to tell me if it's the left side or the right side going up or down. And then today we're also going to learn about multiplicity. So multiplicity, um, let me take out my highlighter. Multiplicity is when a function has more than one of the same zero. So this is called multiplicity. 
And so the, the last unit we saw, zeros is where it crosses the x-axis. Those represent solutions to your polynomial function, okay? Um, so if you have multiple solutions of the same value, that's called multiplicity. And then in math three, we're going to focus on even multiplicity. It's going to create a relative maximum or minimum at that zero. Um, and then odd multiplicity greater than one creates a point of inflection at that zero. But we're not going to focus on that for math three. Uh, for math three, we're only going to focus on even multiplicity for math three okay we're not going to focus on odd multiplicity in this class that's more complicated um and that's more on like on a pre-calculus class okay all right so then we have different examples so if you notice here for the first example there's no multiplicity because i only have one of each zero so at each of the zeros we're going to cross the x-axis However, when we start to look at something like this, the multiplicity, um, the multiplicity just means you have two of the same zero. So two ones, so one has multiplicity times two. Um, and so if I look at my graph here, my positive one is there, that's multiplicity. Notice I do not cross the x-axis there, it bounces off of it and it creates a maximum at that zero with multiplicity, okay? Um, and then for the other zero, does not have multiplicity, so you cross the x-axis. Um, you could have two of them having multiplicity. So I can see the first one has multiplicity of 5. Sorry, multiplicity times 2 at the negative 5. And then I also have multiplicity times 2 at the positive 2. And then notice it bounces off of both of them. And so that creates two minimums here because of the end behavior they created minimums um but the main thing i wanted you guys to notice is it does not cross the x-axis when there's multiplicity versus if there is no multiplicity you cross the x-axis okay um so maybe make a note of that to yourself um let me erase this here so we well actually i'm going to Add another page here just because I don't have enough room. But maybe you could write this at the front cover of your notes. So if you have multiplicity. Okay, so again, copy this in the front cover of your notes on the inside. The blue front cover or anywhere on your notes, I guess. But if there's multiplicity, you do not cross the x-axis if there's multiplicity you do not cross the x-axis and we're going to draw asterisks for the zeros the asterisk means we're not going to cross the x-axis okay if there's no multiplicity we cross the x-axis okay so no multiplicity i'm going to put a regular dot at the zeros so the regular dots means we're going to cross the x-axis and then the asterisk for the zeros means we do not cross the x-axis because there's multiplicity and it creates like a maximum or a minimum okay so asterisk means do not cross and regular dots means we're going to cross the x-axis on the graph. Okay. All right. Then for our steps, we're going to have steps today. So for steps, they're not on your paper. So we're just going to just talk about each one kind of just... One at a time. You can put these again on the front cover of your notes. Really, it's just really quickly. The first one, step one, is to first tell me your scale. Step two is to plot the zeros. And then uh, figure out if multiplicity. So I'm going to put note multiplicity. 
meaning like do you have to put a dot versus an asterisk for your zeros step three is to um plot your end behavior i'm just put eb for end behavior and then step number four is to then sketch from left to right okay so again those are the steps right there steps one is to draw your scale step two plot the zeros and note any multiplicity so putting the dots versus the asterisks and then step three is to plot the end behavior and step four you're going to just connect everything from left to right All right, so let's look at um, our first example. Um, the steps are here, but again, they're not on your paper, which is why I wanted you guys to copy them. Uh, but steps for graphing, first we're gonna, the X and Y axis are already drawn. You just have to put your scale on it. Uh, step two, plot your zeros, note any multiplicity. Step three, you wanna put arrows for your end behaviors. And then step four is sketch the graph from left to right. So let's look at our first example. You should be on the very first example on your notes. Um, look at the end behavior. Everything is written there for you, so you don't have to copy it. But we have x is negative, y is positive, x is positive, y is negative. And then your three zeros are negative 3, 1, and 6. Um, so like I said, we're going to have to go backwards this time. I'm giving you the end behavior. You have to figure out if it's the left side, the right side, up or down. And so if you remember, the x-axis tells you if it's left or right. So the right side is positive infinity, and the left side is negative infinity. So if I look at that here, my x's, the first one says x is negative infinity. So my negative infinity is the left side. So I know the first one is the left side, and the second one says x is positive. So on the x-axis going to positive, that tells me that's the right side. And then my y tells me up or down. So if I look at the y-axis, going upwards is positive infinity, and going down is negative infinity. Okay? So for my first one here, it says y goes to positive. So on the y-axis going to positive, that means it's going to go up. And then the second one says y goes to negative. And so if I look at the negative, that means it's going to go down. Okay. Um, and then notice I have three zeros. I have one, two, three zeros. None of them have multiplicity. But three zeros tells me this is going to be an x to the third power. And an x to the third power tells me that this is an odd function, meaning the arrows are going to be pointing in opposite directions. Okay? Odd means opposite directions for end behavior. Again, I know that that's cubic because I have three zeros. One, two, three zeros. That's x to the third, which means it's odd. My end behaviors are going to be pointing in opposite directions. Okay? So step one is to draw your scale. So at the um, x-axis, kind of just you can go by ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, negative three, negative four, negative five, and negative six. You have to tell me what your scale is. Sometimes you will have bigger numbers like a 20 or a 15. So you're going to have to adjust your scale at the bottom. Okay. But I believe for all the examples today, you can stick to ones. But in the future, you might end up with like a 0 of 15 or a 0 of like negative 20. So you're going to have to adjust your scale to go by twos. All right. So that's the step one draw your scale. Step two is to plot the zeros and note any multiplicity. So notice none of your zeros have multiplicity. 
this is no multiplicity on any of those. So I'm going to put a regular dot on my three zeros. And the dots mean I'm going to cross the x-axis. Okay? So at my three zeros, I got the negative three, put a regular dot. My positive one, put a regular dot. And at the six, put a regular dot. That's step two. So step one, tell me the scale. Step two, draw your end behavior. And then, I'm sorry, um, plot your zeros. Step three is to plot the end behavior. So for my end behavior, I know that the left side is going to be going upwards. So on the left side over here, I'm going to look at my last zero, and I'm going to put an arrow slightly over to the left, pointing upwards right here, okay? So my left side is going to have an arrow pointing upwards. And then if I look at the second one, it says that the right side has to go down. So if I look on the last zero on the right, I'm going to put an arrow pointing downwards slightly to the right of my last zero down here, okay? So put an arrow pointing downwards. And then the last thing you want to do is connect everything from left to right. So I'm going to start at the top, and then I'm going to cross the x-axis all three times because I have a regular dot. So I'm going to cross, 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 and end up at the bottom. So we're going to cross, 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 and end up at the bottom. Um, this part right here doesn't really matter how far up or how far down you go. And the important part for the lesson is to sketch it, connecting the zeros correctly, okay? Another thing you need to know is if there is no zero there, you cannot touch or cross the x-axis, okay? So I can't, um, I'll draw a non-example. I cannot do something like this where I just draw a whole bunch of lines everywhere because I don't have a zero here, here, or any of those places. So I can't be doing stuff like that. If there's no zero, you should not be touching the x-axis or crossing it, okay? All right, um, let's look at the next example. Um, the end behavior should be given to you, right? Positive, positive, negative, negative. But you just have to fill in the zeros. Negative 5, negative 3, 0. Negative 5, negative 3, 0. All right. Uh, how many zeros do I have? 3, which means I have x to the third power which means it's odd. Because it's odd, my arrows are going to point opposite direction. Okay? All right. And also, I have no multiplicity. So I'm going to put regular dots, and we're going to cross the x-axis. So for my scale, again, I'm going to go by 1. So 1, 2, 3... Four, five, six, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, and negative six. So I'm going to go put a regular dot on my three zeros. So I have a negative five, a negative three, and a zero. For my end behavior, again, I have to figure out what that end behavior means. The x's tells you positive or negative uh, is the left and the right side. So if it's positive, that's the right side. If it's negative, that's the left side. And then going up or down, up is positive, down is negative. So if I look at my end behavior for the first one, I have x is positive. x is positive on the x-axis. On the x-axis, going to positive, that means I have the right side. And then for the second one, x is negative. So if I look at the x-axis, going to the negative, that's the left side. And then the up and the down, 
if I notice the first one says y goes to positive. So which um, direction is the positives? Up or down? Up. And then for the second one right there, y is negative. Which direction is that? Up or down? Down. Good. All right. So I'm going to put an arrow on the left side of the graph. The left side of the graph, I'm going to put an arrow downwards. Okay. On the left side next to the last is zero. I put an arrow pointing downwards. And then on the right side of the graph, I'm going to be pointing upwards. So on the last zero on the right side, I'm going to point upwards. And then we're going to just connect everything from left to right. So start at the left side, end up at the right side. We're going to cross every time because there's no multiplicity. So we're going to cross, 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 and end up at the top of that. And like I said earlier, this part doesn't matter how far up or how far down you go. You can go way up here if you want and like way down there. Um, as long as you're crossing where you're supposed to be crossing and your arrows are pointing in the right direction. All right, um, next example is a practice problem. You guys are gonna go ahead and try this one. It's at the very top of your second page. You guys are trying this one? You can work together with your partners. Um, end behavior is positive, negative, negative, positive. And you need to copy your three zeros. Huh? You have three zeros? So this is an x to the third, which means it's odd. So go ahead and practice this one. So again, some of you guys confused the end behavior. You guys should have had um, the left side going upwards and then the right side going downwards. Um, so the first part, remember the x's, this tells you that this positive, so that's the right side. Y goes negative, goes down. Uh, x is negative, is left. Y is positive, goes up. So that means the left side should be pointing upwards, right side should be pointing downwards, okay? Some of you guys flipped it. You did it in the opposite direction, okay? Uh, so be careful with that. All right, next example. Um, if you look at your notes, it says multiplicity. So just cross out where it says multiplicity. This does not have multiplicity. Oh, my bad. Um, this doesn't have multiplicity. So cross out where it says multiplicity on the next example. The end behavior is the same. So we got positive, negative, negative, negative. This just, there has no multiplicity. So just cross out where it says multiplicity there. All right, so you'll need to copy your zeros. We got negative five, negative one, one, and four. Okay, this time I want you to notice how many zeros do we have this time? Four. That means I have a x to the fourth power, which means this time is even. So your arrows should be pointing in the same direction, pointing upwards and pointing downwards, both of them. Okay. Um, so if I look at my x-axis, we can draw the scale. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, um, negative one, negative two, negative three negative four, negative five, and negative six. Um, notice I still do not have multiplicity, but I want you guys to see what an even function is going to look like. These still have no multiplicity, which means you're gonna put a regular dot on all your three zeros, and I mean four zeros, and we're going to cross the x-axis every time. So my zeros, I have negative five, negative one, positive one, 
and positive 4. So for my end behavior, x is positive. What side is that, left or right? Right side. And x is negative is which side? Left. So now let's look at the y's. Y is negative. That means I'm going up or down? Down. down. And then the second one, y is negative. That means we're going down. Notice they're both going downwards. That's because it's an even function. Okay, that should happen when it's even. Um, so put an arrow pointing downwards next to your last two zeros there. Pointing downwards. And then we're going to cross the x-axis every single time. So we're going to cross, 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 cross. So cross, 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 cross. It creates kind of like an M shape. Uh, the loops part, again, doesn't really matter how far up or down you loop it, as long as you cross at the four times. Um, if like, let's say you're doing these and it didn't match up. So like, let's say you start at the bottom and cross, 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 but then you have your arrow up here. That means you did something wrong. Okay. So, um, what I'm trying to say is if your arrow, let's say you said your end behavior ended up that way, but when you're crossing and you get here, you're like, oh, I didn't end where I was supposed to end. So double check your arrows and see if they um, are correct. All right. So next example is supposed to be on the whiteboard, but I'm just going to skip it for sake of time. Um, and instead, I want you guys to copy this one is our next example on your notes. We have a positive, positive, negative, positive, and we have two zeros this time, um, or I should say two different zeros. I have a negative three and a one, so copy your zeros right there, negative three and a positive one, but if you notice, both of those have multiplicity this time, so the multiplicity times two. Remember, that means you have two of each zero. That means I have, really, this means I have negative three, negative three, positive one, positive one, right? The multiplicity means you have two of each of those. So how many total zeros do I have? Four. This is a x to the fourth power, which means it's going to be even. And so because it's even, your arrows should be pointing in the same direction. Okay, um, so when I plot my zeros, this time there is multiplicity. So I'm going to put an asterisk at my negative 3 and my 1. and means I do not cross the x-axis this time. Okay, so let's draw our scale. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and negative 6. So I'm going to put an asterisk at the negative 3 right here and at the positive 1. And my asterisk means I do not cross the x-axis, okay? We're going to bounce off of it. But I need to figure out where to start it. So one more time, x is positive, x is negative, y is positive, y is positive. I want you guys to practice telling your partner what does each of the end behavior parts mean. So the right side has to go where and the left side has to go where. Go ahead and lefties tell your partner what the end behavior should look like. So can I have... Um, Jose Gonzalez, can you tell me the right side? Where does it have to go? Right side should go up or down? Huh? So if you look at the Y right here, it's positive. So positive, does that mean go up or down? Up. So my right side should go upward. So on my right um, side,
side, I'm going to put an arrow pointing upward. Okay. All right. So for the left side, where should I have drawn my arrow? Nancy's not here. Richie's not here. Um, Snow, can you tell me the left side should be pointing where? Up. Upward. Good. Thank you. I didn't notice they're both pointing up. That's because it's an even function. Even function means they should be pointing the same direction. Okay. Um, but because I have multiplicity, we do not cross the x-axis. We're going to bounce off of it, okay? So we're going to go down and then bounce and then bounce, okay? So I have to go bounce off of it and then go towards the next zero and bounce off of it because I cannot cross the x-axis because of the multiplicity there, okay? So we're going to go down. Do not cross. You're going to bounce off of it and then bounce off of that positive one right there. So it creates like a W shape. The multiplicities right here means I do not cross the x-axis. We create like two minimums at the zeros. All right, let's look at our next example. In our next example, I have n behavior is positive, negative, negative, negative. And my zeros are negative 2, 0, and 3, but 3 has multiplicity, okay? Only the 3 has a multiplicity. So I have a negative 2, a 0, and the 3 has multiplicity. So let's draw our scale. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, and negative six. So this time I have a negative two and zero. Do not have multiplicity. So I'm going to put a regular dot for each of those. And the regular dots means we cross the x-axis. And only the 3 has multiplicity. So for the 3, I'm going to put an asterisk. That means there's multiplicity, so we do not cross the x-axis at the 3. Okay? Um, and again, how many zeros would this one have? What does that multiplicity represent? Two of them. So I have two threes and a negative two and a zero. I have how many total zeros? Four. X to the fourth, which means this is even. You should be pointing in the same direction. So at the negative two, I'm going to put a regular zero. At the zero, put a regular dot. And the positive three, we're going to put an asterisk. So for my end behaviors, x is positive, x is negative. So this time, uh, righties, share with your partner. Which side should the right go and the left side? Do I go up or down? Go ahead and righties, tell your partner. Yes? <laughs> down for both of them, right? They're both negative, so they both go down. So next to the left side, we're gonna go down, and next to the right side, we're gonna go down. Um, and so remember, the regular dots means I cross, cross, and then bounce back down, okay? So cross, cross, bounce, because I cannot cross at the three right there, okay? So we're gonna start at the bottom, Cross the x-axis, cross the x-axis, and then bounce back down on the other one, okay? Um, and because it's even, I can see they're both pointing in the same direction. Okay? All right, you guys have like five minutes to work on the last two examples right there. You have the zeros given to you and you have if it's multiplicity or not. Um, so for the rest of the period, you guys are working on the last two examples right there, okay?
Um, and then once you guys finish, you guys can clean up and help me sanitize the desk down. Uh, there's going to be no homework for the weekend. You guys can just relax for the weekend, okay?